itself, which is about embroidered rectangular flavoring resonators for material characterization. My name is Sharsal, and I'm a PhD student, and I'm here on behalf of my group at Northumbria University. So the outline of our talk uh, is like, uh, I'm going to go over an introduction. I'll uh, specify our design, and um, I'll talk about our experimental setup and show you the results, and I'll wrap it up with a conclusion. So our aim is to develop uh, embroidered metamaterials for next generations of flexible sensors. Uh, so embroidered sensors can be fabricated using conductive threads on normal fabrics. And uh, the good thing about them is that they can be used for wearable or flexible devices. Um, they are low cost fabrication and um, they can operate at microwave frequencies. On the other hand, split ring resonators are the basic building blocks of metamaterials, um, which means that, um, and they're usually like rectangular or circular metallic designs that are fabrica fabricated on the electric substrates, and, and the fundamental frequency of them are dependent on their geometry and the dielectric substrate. And they can be modeled as an, uh, as an LC um, tank, uh, so by changing the geometry or the dielectric um, substrate, we can actually change the frequency, so we have a control on that. And based on this, uh, uh, we have a frequency range between like microwave frequency up to visible light. And the good part about uh, split ring resonators is that uh, they, we can achieve high quality factors like more than a thousand, and uh, we can actually excite them uh, wirelessly. So I would like to also show you some research that's been done on embroidered devices. On the left, that you can see a structure that was used uh, in recent years for um, blocking a frequency band like between 1800 to 1880 megahertz. And on the right-hand side is for a different group. Um, a split ring resonator was coupled with a transmission line to gen uh, generate a filter, and by changing that design and the dimensions, we were able to change the frequency, the operational frequency of the filter. So, uh, going back to the SR designs, uh, I, I would like to explain how it, is, it can be worked like wirelessly. So, we can couple the split ring resonators uh, using two monopole antennas, and when we're connecting the mo monopole antennas, for example, to a um, network analyzer, these antennas generate electromagnetic waves and the electromagnetic wave can couple to the um, split ring resonators and depending on the orientations of the E or H field, we can have different, uh, different modes of frequencies. And if we are able to generate a circulating current path in the um, resonators, we call this frequency as a magnetic or fundamental frequency and otherwise it's called electrical frequencies. And, they, and there are different scenarios that you can actually achieve magnetic resonance. So one is when H is perpendicular to the surface of the resonator, so you would uh, achieve a circulating path. The other is uh, H is perpendicular, but also E is polarizing the gap. So E is also causing a um, supportive current that is circulating through the ring. And uh, the last one would be like if um, H is not perpendicular, but E is the uh, polarizing effect. So in a previous work of ours, we picked up a rectangular design and the uh, design specifications are written in the slide. And we investigate the um, effect of different orientations and the different um, field and how they can affect the frequency response. So I just put two examples here. On the left-hand side, you can see um, on a, config a configuration that H was perpendicular device, so it was expected uh, to have a um, magnetic resonance. But the other, uh, other hand, uh, I mean, on the other, on the other hand, on the right-hand side, um, we also achieved a magnetic resonance that wasn't expectable because uh, either neither H was perpendicular and E wasn't um, polarizing the gap, but E was along the short si size of the rectangle, and since we chose the rectangular shape, we were able to um, achieve a virtual node there, and, and we could generate like two circulating current paths uh, through the ring. So the quality factor of, of these resonances were um, so high, so that we thought that we can use them as um, sensors to characterize different materials. So we came up with this idea to fabricate them using embroidery techniques. 
So this is the uh, recent designs that we have. Uh, so we chose the same dimensions and uh, we used an em embroidery machine. Uh, we used a stainless steel as conductive threads. And here inverted methodology was implied. So it means that um, the conductive uh, thread was um, put on the bottom side and the polyester was uh, put on the uh, top side and uh, high thread tensions were used to ensure that the dimensions are correct. And uh, tear away stabilizer were also used to uh, avoid the fabric gather. So on the right hand side, you can see our setup. So we used two monopole antennas. And uh, for the first step was to calibrate the setup. So uh, we uh, wrapped the resonator around an empty bottle. It's a plastic bottle and we put it between the antennas and we somehow changed the location to find the best location where we could see uh, the highest quality factor. So here uh, we could achieve like two different modes of excitations and as you can see in, in these two figures the frequency which is around two gigahertz show the highest quality factor so we focus our uh, attention to that frequency to change the materials and see if the frequency is changing. So uh, for different materials, we use DI water, methanol, ethanol, IPA, and acetone. And as a reference point, we use empty bottle. So when we're changing the material inside the bottle, we're actually changing the dielectric constant of the uh, material inside. So it means that we're changing the capacitance. So we're expecting to see a shift uh, in the frequency. So the higher the permittivity, it means the lower would be the frequency. And uh, so in this table, if you can see different permittivities of the different materials and uh, how we could, met, uh, um, we could meet our expectations. And to ensure that our results are repeatable, we uh, measured each of the chemicals like 15 times. And on the right hand side, you can see the histogram of the, our measurements. So to conclude uh, my talk, we demonstrated an embroidered rectangular SR sensor for material characterization between one to four gigahertz. The quality factors were, uh, were around 252,000. And uh, we fabricated the device using stainless steel thread and a conventional fabric. This method is low cost and is scalable. And that's it. So I would like to thank the audience for staying like in the last session. <laughs> and the last hour, and also uh, thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present our work. Thank you. Right, any question? You have only shown the, uh, the real part of the permittivity, okay? And what's about the imaginary part? Because uh, we're moving from simulation the real life, I see a uh, much larger bandwidth. This is a very low Q in the measurement because of the real world, the uh, distance between the electrodes and the speed ring. Could you comment about the possibility to also detect the imaginary part, the, the conductivity? Yes, so uh, this result that you can see here are actually the experimental results, so it's not the simulation. But uh, the data that we have here is based on the paper, so they are reporting the real parts of this. But as you can see here, for, for example, for DI water, the um, real part is 80. And for methanol, is 32. But where, when you see the resonances here, 80 and 32 are close to each other. Whereas, where, uh, DI, uh, for example, empty, empty would be around 1. And uh, for example, IPA would be around 18 but these two are like on the uh, right hand side. So I think the imaginary part is affecting this part. So for example, if it was only the real part, I would expect that all of them be closer to the empty bottle one, but now like ethanol and methanol are close to the, uh, the eye water. So I'm uh, thinking that it is because of the imaginary part of that. Any other question? No, we thank the speaker again. Thank you. And uh, we move to the third talk, um, which is uh, 